Services and the Northampton City Council. I am Councilor Maureen Carney, Chair of this committee, and I'll ask the Administrative Assistant to call the roll, please. Councilor Bidwell? Here. Councilor Carney? Present. Councilor LaVarge? Present. Councilor O'Donnell? Here. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll ask first if there is public comment for this meeting. Okay, seeing none, I'll ask if there's a motion to approve the minutes of June 7th. Motion to approve. So seconded. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, no abstentions. That motion carries. And so we have on the agenda today um, Mayor Nakowitz to report on implementation plans regarding the 2015 parking stuff. Over to the mayor. Sure. Yes. Um, good afternoon, uh, members of the committee. Um, and thanks for this opportunity to just give you kind of an update on the Walker parking study, um, which was uh, completed last year. And um, just trying to give you a quick overview of how we're sort of approaching the several different um, uh, recommendations. Um, and if you, I don't know if you have the study or refer back to the study, but it's on our website. But there's there were several recommendations. Some of them were kind of um, very specific, uh, regulatory. Uh, some of them were uh, capital related. Uh, some of them were kind of more long range planning kinds of um, kinds of recommendations. So, um, and part of what we're trying to do is several of them are kind of all integrated. Um, so, for example. One of the recommendations that came out of the study was the um, was to really look at improving our signage and our our parking signage and our wayfinding signage in the downtown. People um, uh, not not knowing where parking was located, um, not knowing, for example, that there's the new spaces over by the um, by the police deck um, at night after six, which is all public parking after hours. Um, not necessarily when they come come into town. Um, some of our signage is a little bit dated and old. Um, and um, so, long story short, as you may recall, in this capital plan or the capital plan that we developed, you know, last um, last fall and then submitted this spring to you as part of the capital improvement program, um, we had a number of projects, including one um, to hire a uh, wayfinding and uh, signage design consultant. Um, which was approved, as well as some funding to actually implement that plan. Um, so we have actually hired a firm. Um, their name is Faberman Design. Um, they're quite uh, well regarded in this particular field. Um, locally, they worked most recently with Amherst and Greenfield. Um, they've also done work with um, Ipswich, with Winchester, Brookline, um, as well as larger clients like Oh, the Boston Red Sox. Um, and they're, what they'll be doing, and we're going to be pulling together um, kind of, uh, I guess it's called like an idea, idea, idea group, I guess is, is the terminology that was used, um, uh, which is pulling together some staff, pulling together some key um, community people, um, uh, and um, to sort of work with them. They've already been in Northampton kind of taking a look around, trying to get a trying to develop some ideas and some themes for for that um, and so our hope is that that's going to they're going to give us some recommendations on on um, signage um, that we can then begin to implement um, sort of I, I brought some examples just just to give you a quick flavor of it um, you know they, they they this was some work they did in Ipswich and they kind of look at some of the historic features of the community it's which they have the choke bridge, which I guess is one of their more uh, famous, um, you know, famous uh, landscapes. And so they've kind of created this this thing, Ipswich bridging history. And then basically they then go from there and create all the parking signage, all of the wayfinding signage, all of the signage for. Um, you know, we've even asked them to look at could we replace uh, sandwich boards with something a little less obtrusive. Um, as a way to kind of direct people, um, not only to attractions, but also how to find parking, how to find transportation, how to find government buildings, et cetera. So, um, and, and they've given us other examples of, of you know, Situate and Brookline and other things like that. So 
that's, that's sort of the thing that they do, and that was one of the recommendations um, that the study uh, uh, put forth, and so we're moving ahead on that. Um, the other piece that we're working on is the technology upgrades, um, and uh, you may recall that last year we did the upgrade to the uh, parking garage um, and, and moved over to the um, new credit card system, pay on foot credit card system, um, which has been working quite well. Uh, we have far fewer um, glitches and, and complaints. You know, there's always a learning curve for people. Um, and people are utilizing the credit card uh, functionality. I think we're seeing like almost 50% of customers are are using plastic instead of um, instead of uh, money, so it's a convenience thing for people. Um, so you may also recall that we have money in the capital budget uh, to also do upgrades to our kiosks uh, downtown, um, and we are in, in the final phases of the um, of the process there for procurement of upgrading our kiosk systems uh, to be able to accept credit cards. Those are the um, those are out on the street. Uh, what do we have, like 25 of them or something? I can't remember the number. Between you know, on street and some of our lots. Um, so the idea would be um, to get those deployed, um, hopefully uh, this early this fall, um, and so that we can begin uh, offering uh, credit card technology or debit card technology uh, to customers there. The other thing that that then kind of ties into is making some of the regulatory changes uh, that were recommended um, because um, I would like to time, what I'm hoping to do is time the regulatory changes with the implementation of the new kiosks uh, because every time we make a change to one of our kiosks, there's like a, basically it's like a $500 charge to reprogram it. So I'd rather have everything kind of happen at once where we're switching over the kiosk and switching the time and hour changes. Um, so. My plan is um, trying to look ahead to when that procurement will happen, would be to submit to the city council um, probably at your August meeting um, so that it would get referred out so that we can sort of begin this conversation in September after Labor Day. Um, several of the regulatory changes that have been recommended. Um, not all of the regulatory changes, I'm actually gonna put forward um, most of the basic ones is my intent. Um, and um, I think there's some others that I, I think need a little further thought, and, and I, I've been talking to people around, around the city and just trying to get some feedback on. And um, so for sure my plan is to move forward the time changes for Main Street, uh, for Gothic Street, and for the Masonic Street lot, um, which were fairly basic, you know, moving our one hour to two hour meters. Um, and then the, the, um, the, the Meter lots in both Masonic Street and Armory Street, increasing those to three hours. Um, and those are fairly straightforward, um, I think. Um, and so that, that's, that's, on the, that, that's what I'm planning to do for that. We've really, we've talked a lot internally. We've had a lot of discussions with PEO and, and um, you know, uh, Nancy's here, who some of you know from Transportation and Parking, um, but she's our key parking person uh, Nancy Forrestal, um, she's the assistant uh, treasurer collector now who oversees um, the parking um, enforcement. Um, and, and so one of the things we've talked about a lot internally is this idea of shifting the time, um, but only for Main Street. Um, and uh, sounds good in theory, uh, but there's been just some concerns about how it would play out to have only one one part of our parking system have a time frame uh, that goes from you know until eight o'clock, but the rest of it all ends at six o'clock. And whether uh, that would be more confusion um, than not, whether the benefit would outweigh um, you know the added confusion that may 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 entail. Um, obviously, staffing would be you just have to have extra staffing for that one section. Um, so my my initial thought is to move it forward maintaining the current time zones. That's, those are, that's my current thinking on it. Um, so that is, those are sort of the main regulatory changes uh, that they recommended. They did recommend long-term uh, looking at our pricing in the garage. Um, 
uh, and particularly as we start to try to do other upgrades or think about other structures, they felt that longer term we should start looking at pricing in the garage. Um, and then the other, the other key piece of the, um, of the study was to begin exploring um, uh, potential new parking in the city, um, both municipal as well as uh, the possibility for private public uh, partnerships. They did outline a number of private lots in the city uh, that they felt were, um, that, that perhaps could be more utilized. Um, so we have begun some conversations with, um, with some of those folks. Uh, one in particular um, is Verizon um, because of the Masonic Street lot um, and the fact that there's sort of that uh, Verizon facility, which has seems to have some excess parking capacity that's adjacent to our Masonic Street lot. Um, so we've had um, some pretty high level conversations with them and their real estate uh, team. And um, unfortunately, uh, it got a little bit delayed because of the strike that happened over the last couple of months. Because um, most of those people that I was meeting with were suddenly putting on hard hats and I think going back out into the field during the strike. So, um, so we're hoping to, um, to potentially look at some ways where we could potentially expand the Masonic Street lot, uh, potentially do a lease agreement with Verizon um, to add some additional space to that lot, which would be good because that side of Main Street needs, um, needs additional space. Um, and then the other piece, uh, we're doing um, some design. Uh, we're, we're working with um, Ty and Bond, who's looking at the Roundhouse lot. Um, and doing a study for us to see whether or not we can, um, by better striping of the lot or a more efficient use of the lot, uh, be able to increase our parking capacity there, particularly as Pulaski Park will expand um, and take away some of the current parking. Um, and then finally, we're also working um, on that longer term look at uh, potential um, parking garage uh, sites, which Walker touched on very peripherally, very briefly in the report. They mentioned it. They talked a little bit about the Masonic Street lot as a potential, um, but we are working with them to sort of drill a little bit deeper down and begin looking at other potential longer term. You know, they basically recommended we should start the planning process, knowing how long it takes to bring a system like that online. Um, so we've begun that process as well. Um, so the, the key stuff that's sort of imminent um, would be this convergence of new technology, new signage, and new time limits, which would all be happening hopefully around the same time. Um, and so, you know, for example, right now we have all the signs on Main Street that say one hour, you know, parking, and obviously it'd be great if we were gonna, when, if and when we, when we switch that, or if the council approves switching that, um, we perhaps, hopefully, would have some signage ready to go um, that we could install um, at the same time. Um, so we're trying to kind of coordinate the technology, the change, the regulatory changes, as well as um, as well as you know the um, yeah the, te the technology, the regulations, and the signage, so that they would all kind of arrive at the same time. Hopefully, um, we may have to do some um, we may have to do some temporary signage in the meantime. But we do have. Funding in the budget, uh, in the capital project budget, for not only the design phase, but then actually the implementation phase for the signage, um, and that's not, you know, a very highly complicated thing to do. They're also going to be taking a look at our existing signage to see if there's signage we should be removing, just signage that's superfluous or that is unnecessary. Um, the main thing we're hoping for is that when people come to the city. Um, they can sort of feel comfortable, they can sort of feel like, you know, they kind of know where uh, there's parking signage, they, they can sort of understand there's a theme to the parking signage, you know, kind of when you go to you know, Boston or a bigger city, there's the, you know, the ubiquitous blue parking sign, you just kind of know, when you see one of those signs, okay, there's going to be a parking garage nearby. Um, and so we're trying to work on uh, something like that, but also something that sort of fits into the character of Northampton as well. Um, so that'll be um, an interesting project. Amherst finished theirs. They haven't done the implementation yet. Greenfield did sort of a smaller scale version. Uh, they haven't done the implementation yet. Um, 
you know, we got the funding for both the planning and the implementation, so I don't think we're going to see a, a delay. I hope we won't have a delay. We're going to try to move forward once we get to go ahead on the, um, on the signage. So I think those are, that's kind of the quick overview of where we are. Um, and again, uh, timing-wise, uh, the, um, the, we've got a lot of the vendor, most all the vendor information, we're doing some due diligence. The other interesting thing that's happening from Nancy's perspective is that September, um, we also the bid, it's time to, the contract ends on their uh, handheld um, devices, the Complus system that we use for the PEOs. Um, so there's also some great synergy there of making sure that what we get for them syncs up with the, the newer technology that we're looking at for the kiosk system. Um, and we are exploring not only the traditional pay, you know, put your little ticket in the window, but some of the ticketless ones as well. Um, the report talked about um, the license plate system, which we're, we're looking at and, and trying to understand. There's only a couple of communities that have been experimenting with that. Um, the only other option is the pay by space. I don't really see that as being as feasible. Uh, for us, the pay by numbered space, I know Amherst has moved to that. Um, but I, I just I think that might work in a lot. Um, but I, I already took out all the signposts on Main Street, so to go back and put little signposts everywhere with numbers on it, um, and to, to paint numbers, um, just doesn't seem feasible. So we are, uh, we are making sure we're testing all the different possibilities. Um, so that's kind of where we are. Okay. Any questions from the members? Was the talk of restriping the Masonic? Lot at some point as well. There was, there was a, a few more cars. Yeah, there was talk of looking at, well, they actually mocked up like a, a garage. Um, they also mocked up if you could somehow assemble the Verizon lot and the TD Bank North lot, you could have like a, a better flow of traffic like in one way and out the other way. Um, we did, we, we've had conversations with all of those property owners. Um, at this point, the um, well, the, uh, the, 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 what is it called? The, um, the, the, sign, the church scientist building was on the market when we started talking about it. Now it's been sold and I've probably seen the construction fence all around it. Um, so that parking is kind of not really in play, I don't think, at this point. Um, uh, and and uh, so Verizon sort of seems like the best, the most viable one right now. So the, the plan would be, um, that if we did secure some extra real estate, that we would then try to look at how best do we restripe it. It's a little bit challenging. We have those dumpsters, which right. are kind of critical for those businesses in that part of, um, right. of back there. So there'd have to be some coordination of those. That does limit it a little bit. But if we got a little more breathing room on the Verizon side, that could allow, well, definitely allow us to add more spaces, but it right. might change the way we Figure that lot. Okay, so you couldn't reconfigure it unless you had new adjacent. Rooms. I mean, I, uh, uh, meaningfully. Right now, it's it would be very difficult okay. to do. It's pretty tight the way it's yeah. configured right now, right. Um, and to keep that kind of circular flow, because right, right. it's really just one entrance right. and one entrance out. Um, we try to discourage people using Cracker Barrel, and if we move towards some kind of a park, that will be even more important if if access through Cracker Barrel is right. closed off. Um, so that'll be, so circulation in that lot, but that's a really important lot because it's that side of Main Street. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping signage maybe will help some of those patterns as well, because that was the, you know, if you read through the study, you know, there's certain places, like the Roundhouse lot, you know, full to capacity during the day. Um, at night, maybe not so much. Um, uh, and, and so there is kind of a shift that happens. So, between the park improvements, the lighting improvements, that you know, perhaps that will make people feel like if I want to go to Packers, I can park in the Roundhouse lot and just you know walk through Pulaski Park or, or whatever it is. If I want to go to the parlor room or the Iron Horse or whatever, I can do that. So, um, so we're hoping that a combination of all of these things uh, will make the parking system more um, user friendly. And we're also looking at um, several um, app. Uh, you know, smartphone applications as well, um, including some that might sync up with our with our kiosk system. Right. Um, so we are looking at that. That was one of the other 
recommendations. You know, they recommended having a college student design an app. Um, that's all good and well, and I'm sure we can. I know that um, Brian Foote's working on a new downtown cultural district app. Uh, you know, for for events downtown, he's working with some students on that. Um, but we really want something that would integrate with our parking system. For example, one of the things we've talked about um, is because the parking garage now um, has this new, um, you know, pretty much real time system um, that's you know wireless, and we get pretty much real time data on the on the occupancy of the garage. Um, there's a potential we could work on signage that could give people an update, like, you know, there's still vacancies in the garage. You know, we could have an interactive sign that says, you know, there's still 50 spaces in the garage. Again, people that might be coming around the new roundabout and coming into Northampton, you know, on Pleasant Street for a concert, if you could say to them, there's, you know, 50 free spaces in the garage, maybe they would just go right there, as opposed to, you know, driving around King Street or you know, trying to park in Jack Finn's parking lot or you know, whatever it is you know, trying to do for parking for a show. Mm -hmm. um, so we're also gonna look at some of that technology if as we start to move toward more real time, because um, you know, the, the kiosks we have right now are just kind of solitary, single actors. They don't, they're not connected to each other um, and they just dispense a ticket and that's, that's <coughs> how you know what the parking is. You know, we can obviously run reports on how many tickets were sold and, and all that kind of stuff, but when you move to the wireless, then it becomes real time and you can actually um, start to track possibly how much vacancies you have. So, anyway, great. So that's the update. Um, uh, questions? So, so that, that's the, the for, for example, an app that as, as you're approaching Northampton, you can where, where are the parking spaces? Yes. Um, that, also, also some of the systems we're looking at, you could pay for parking on an app. Um, uh -huh. uh, you wouldn't yeah. even have to go to the kiosk. You could just pay on right. your app. Right. Um, so that's that's something we're looking at as well. Uh, and they uh, those often integrate with your parking. Those often provide a map for you. Mm -hmm. um, they even have a where's my car parked feature <laughs> for people to park and they can't remember where they park. Um, so there's, so yeah, so we are looking at those kinds of things. Um, you could also theoretically add time um, if you were someplace and you, um, and you were running short on time, you could also potentially add time. So, uh, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to look at stuff, look at technology that will hopefully um, be more efficient, but also improve the, the customer experience as well. Counselor. You mentioned something about 50% are using credit cards. Yeah. Are we having a problem getting money with some of the people's credit cards? No. They're not bouncing or anything? Not that I'm aware of. Um, no, I mean, and I mean, keep That's in mind, good. ours are fairly low dollar transactions. I mean, most of our parking, most of our transactions in the garage are a dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, right. probably the, the, the largest subset of them are a dollar, maybe a dollar fifty. So, um, so generally, I don't have any no, problem. no problems at all. Yeah. Very, very few. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, we we're paying fees, but that's sort of we understood that. Yeah. Um, and so, but that's just the cost of our offering that service to people. Um, so yeah. So any 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 further talk about use of outlying private garages, e either for that whenever there should happen to be a show at the Calvin, um, you know, this $5 for a valet kind of thing, or for work, or for worker parking. Yeah. More, uh, no, I think part of, part of what we are looking at doing is, you know, the, you know, the part of it's the signage issue uh, to try to improve, you know, people knowing where that extra parking is. You know, the work, I know there was a, there was a mention of the worker parking, in there, it was kind of specific to the, um, the Hair Academy on Pleasant Street, which was one of the main ones, Marinella, that we're hearing a lot of complaints about. That was kind of some feedback that they got from, from them. Um, I think that's the running shop now. I don't think the mm -hmm. Hair Academy's there anymore. Um, again, I think that there's, uh, I, I think that there's, Parking, I think some of it's education. I think some of it's education on businesses. Um, 
uh, uh, looking at ways that we can sell, uh, you know, make sure people know about the parking pass system, um, uh, trying to you know, provide opportunities and options for people uh, for worker parking, um, and not do what they did find in some cases where employees are parking in prime parking on right. Main Street. There's not really any way we can, um, we can enforce that per se. Part of it's just going to have to be a, a collaboration with the business community. Uh, to make sure that the, that parking is available for customers. Um, but we are going to be looking, part of the whole issue of looking at future garage locations, we'll be looking at some of our sites, potentially private sites, uh, that could be um, uh, a place for more expanded parking in the future. Um, so we will be looking at that with Walker. Right. Um, maybe there's a, a conversation with the Center for the Arts parking lot as well. Yeah. Which is Pretty substantial if you drive back there. It's kind of Definitely. Shape, but, um, and we, if any they're problem. one of the people that I've had they're some preliminary them. conversations with. Mm -hmm. um, they're I don't know that they're quite there yet um, as they finish their construction project, but we have talked a little bit about um, the possibilities, can, especially since it's sort of that part of downtown. Right. I know they're already renting some spaces to click workspace. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of an example where yeah, the city yeah. doesn't even have to get involved. Yeah, right. Um, right. Uh, another example, recently um, we've been doing some work with some property owners on King Street, um, just kind of on the edge of the Central Business District, um, to help to work uh, by working with, putting them in touch with some other businesses who have excess parking capacity to find parking for, um, you know, for workers to be able to accommodate a new business. And I know there were some changes made to the on-street parking as well on King Street, I think we came through the Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, this would be in front of the um, former Hamlin Furniture Store. Right, um, okay. Yeah, on, on King Street. Yeah. So, um, so in some cases, it may be that we're just trying to help facilitate some conversations, you know, right. among businesses, um, but we're also actively pursuing um, other opportunities. Yeah, yeah so, I think the Center for the Arts Lab is kind of like the, the um, the inverse of the roundhouse, because I would think it would be filled during the evening. And Especially if you could work on, again, the signage and yeah. you know people that were coming from Amherst uh, yeah. for a show, maybe a show, well, yeah, obviously a show at, the, at 33 Holly Street, but, right, right, right. but stuff happening on that end of Main Street, right, right, right. Um, there's definitely some potential there. Um, again, whether that's them doing it in an entrepreneurial way themselves, and uh, like some of our uh, property owners do, um, or whether they would want to enter into a partnership with the city uh, to do it, um, like a, a ground lease arrangement or something, similar to what we have at Union Station uh, during the daytime. Um, so there's, those are all things we can look we, we're, we're trying to be open to as we look around to find additional parking. I also, you know, I also think that a big part of it is educational right. as well. Right. And um, uh, I don't think, I don't know, you know, I don't know if we have a dire parking crunch right now, parking emergency. In, in some cases, just I think doing a better job of telling people where there is available parking uh, would be helpful. Um, you know, we routinely go to bigger cities and happily walk four or five, six blocks you know, to go to places. Um, and we have a pretty small compact downtown, so even, you know, parking at Parking at the Roundhouse to go to, you know, the Calvin or something like that is, is for the garage is certainly not a very long walk. Um, right. But people coming to town if they don't know where the garage is or they don't know or don't want to take a chance to go all the way over there to find that it's full, you know, if they were able to look at an app or look at a sign and say there's spaces, then we might start to draw some people there. So. Okay. And the only other, well, sorry, the only other question was, uh, do you have any? Um, um, thoughts about residential streets at this time? Because I know we included a couple on the periphery, kind of near the center for the arts, for yeah. example. Phillips Place yeah. is kind of the one I'm thinking of. Yep. Or maybe that's for the future. So I think a it's a long problem. Yeah, I think it's for the future. I think as that neighborhood develops out between, you know, the, um, the um, independent, New England Independent Living Project, um, you know, on Holly Street, yeah. as that develops out, as 33 Holly Street develops, okay. as we see what happens with Click Workspace, right. I assume there's going to be a little more pressure right. in those neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, whether it's residential, whether it's, I'm not sure what, what the solution is.
question is I think we'll just have to kind of be yeah be willing to look at that mm -hmm. as it starts to come um, they did I mean they took a look at it they did call it out as an issue right, right. Um, they didn't really offer no um, okay. they said look at you know the traditional stuff like look at um, you know residential only or you know right you now which we have on our books but we haven't really used very much other than Kensington I think in your ward mm -hmm. um, but so yeah Uh, you, you, you mentioned Union Station. Any uh, progress in the, I mean, the, 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 as I hear the complaint, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I've just heard one side of it. Yeah. That is that it's true that the uh, rights to the lot revert to Union Station at 6 o'clock. Six o'clock. Yeah, very clear. And we have very clear signage to that effect. Right. That tells but the that. complaint that I've heard, and I haven't independently yeah. checked this out, is that Yes, they have rights, but if there's still a lot of cars in there for the next two, three hours, then that doesn't mean they can actually use it. And I, I, don't, I don't know to, to what extent that's been really yeah, explored. We, we, and it has been explored, and we've had um, conversations with them. We've made some modifications um, to the lot. Um, and the, But the other piece is we've been, I don't want to go into too much of our private discussions, but um, the ball has been in their court for some time um, to look at a possible solution to that. Um, um, and um, I keep reminding them that the ball is in their court, um, but I also keep hearing people standing up at meetings saying the city's not doing anything. So um, I'll, be, I'll be continuing to remind them of that. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that you know, it's, it, we have a, there's an agreement that predated me, that predated the current ownership, uh, that's pretty clear. We have very clear signage that tells people that after six, it's a private lot. Um, we actually don't have the right to tow people after six because it's not our lot anymore. I think they would prefer that we go in and tow those people out of anybody that, that didn't pay them and stays in the lot, that they prefer that we tow them. We actually don't have the right to tow them anymore than we have the right to go to Rich Cooper's lot and tow somebody right. or uh, because it's a, private, it's a private lot at that point. Um, the ability to pay by kiosk, but it only goes until six o'clock. Uh, there is a kiosk that only goes till six o'clock. Oh, yeah, we, we that's how we that's how we pay right now. Okay. Um, that's how it works right now. And then they take over management of the parking after that. So, um, so we're trying to we've talked we we we've, we've had conversations about trying to find ways to do possibly some joint management. Um, and I'll just reiterate that. Um, we, had conversations, um, but the ball is in their court, and so we're waiting to hear uh, potential proposals. So, um, but we have a lease. The lease is still runs for many, many years. The city, uh, you know, received that lease in compensation for significant capital work that it did on the lot, and um, so I'm I'm upholding it, and but also trying to work with them. Obviously, I understand when they have huge events. Um, that uh, they need parking for that. And so we're completely open to working with them on that. There's also going to be a little a further piece on the Amtrak uh, because the um, that the whole issue of the platform is not fully settled yet because there's going to be yet another expansion of the platform. Um, right now, the temporary platform is serving what it's serving, but the longer term plan is to extend that platform. Um, so there's going to be another phase of construction. Um, so that will also uh, be another opportunity to look, re look at some of those issues uh, as well. I just have one more question if you want me to find more. Sure. Um, when you think about this long range project of the possibility of additional parking garage, mm -hmm. your, 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 in your mind, is this seven, eight years down the road by the time of study? funding actually getting there? Um, I, I will say that it's uh, there's not a lot of uh, ready funding for these projects right now. Um, as my colleague in Greenfield, uh, Mayor Martin, is, uh, knows full well, he's got a, he's got a really interesting situation because the, um, the court just built this huge addition onto the back of the courthouse, um, basically into the, what was the parking lot. Um, so they've just done this huge, beautiful new Franklin County sort of 
combined justice center. Um, and so uh, they so they really are concerned about backfilling all the parking that was lost uh, where where basically where the new center was built. So they've been working through the MassWorks program um, and through some other programs. You know, there is funding available um, through MassWorks primarily. I know they're doing some work with Worcester on a parking garage. Um, uh, we also obviously have the capacity to bond and uh, use parking revenue uh, like we did with the first garage. Um, so it would be a, it, it would definitely um, be a multi-year process, not to mention if there's land acquisition involved as well. Um, so yeah, it's, but it's but you know their advice was you don't you know you don't need one right now, but you should start planning for one, uh, particularly as we see new housing developments happening. Um, on Pleasant Street, as we see, you know, more housing on Holly Street, more people wanting to live, you know, closer to downtown. Um, that we want to start looking at that. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we all, and again, I will also say, you know, we're also working to try to make downtown more uh, bikeable and walkable for those of you who came to the Complete Streets demonstration, um, because to the extent that we that for the majority of our city population that lives within a mile of downtown to the extent we can encourage them to feel like they can safely not drive downtown that helps solve our parking situation as well um, if we're trying to free up capacity for the many visitors who come to downtown um, and make it safer for people to say I'm just going to bike downtown or, or walk or uh, transit you know we are working on some transit improvements as well um, the Crosstown bus uh, sounds great and people were excited about it. Um, I would say the ridership has been less than uh, stellar. Uh, there hasn't been very strong ridership. Um, so um, they are going to tweak the timing a little bit to see if that helps. Um, but again, anything we can also do uh, to take, you know, zip cars, we've added zip cars. We're looking at, we're part of a regional bike sharing uh, initiative with Amherst, Holyoke, and Springfield. Um, so we are looking at alternatives to try to get local folks out of their cars and hopefully free up um, space in the parking system as well. Any other questions? Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. working knowledge of the ADA and the standards and regulations 
of the Massachusetts Architectural Assets Board. And that's moved. Uh, um, so I guess we can take the model as a group of folks like I can just I spoke to Mr. Krisky about his reappointment to the Central Business Architecture Committee. Uh, it's reappointed, obviously, but we talked about his extensive experience um, in, um, in Fairfax County, Virginia, yeah. for example, doing lots of historic district work. And exactly. He's a very experienced and so qualified person who really feels like there's a policy rationale. Yes, uh, for uh, Housing Partnership, I spoke to, to Greta Hagus, so the, uh, the person who's appointed. She's Assistant Director of Development at Safe Passage. So she brings okay. to uh, she would bring to the housing partnership her sensitivity to the housing needs for that population, uh, and she's very passionate about. It. She also would bring to the housing partnership her concern about worker housing. She is an example. It's it's, it's tough sometimes for someone working in a nonprofit organization in town getting a decent salary, not a lot to. To, to make ends meet with the housing needs. So she would bring both of those perspectives and it would be a very enthusiastic new participant. The second person, uh, Gordon Shaw, is up for reappointment. He's been chair. For two days, he and I have played telephone patterns. He's calling me here now. So I haven't spoken to him. But uh, a, a reappointment of chair, he's, he's highly regarded. actually reviewed the materials we received from Charles Klopaki and Janet Larson, both reappointments to the Board of Registrars and both gave solid reasons for their continued participation, uh, keenly interested in elections and uh, those being forward there. So, um, so I'll ask, do, do we, do we want to uh, Yeah, I, I, I move that would make a positive recommendation for the this group. I second. Moved and seconded. Okay, and all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? So those will go as a group with a positive recommendation to the full city council. And that brings us to um, any discussion about upcoming department presentations? Have a, we have a blank spot for we could we could choose not to meet in August because neither Parks and Rec nor Veteran Services were able to present. I think you're going to be having some appointments come in forward on oh, the okay. City Council right. on July 14th. So. so we will have to meet at any rate. Um, well, we don't. We, have, uh, we could always do it before City Council. All right. Yeah, we could. Um, done that. Any uh, suggestions? Um, I don't think Council, you were here when I talked with Maury. We are short one person on the Commission of Disabilities. Okay. And we need another person in order to keep the quorum going. And we just approved one reappointment. We have a new one, which you do know Judith's husband, Chris Collins. I don't know if you know Gene Page or not, but okay, he's in his family. Highly recommend to be on the committee. We don't have another meeting now. So it would have to come to City Council in July for a recommendation to our committee. Oh, okay. Referred. So we're going to have a right. We're going to have a committee meeting within that city council meeting in, in July. Is that right? I think I think what Councilor Lavard is suggesting is you can't discuss it within seven days. So it will be referred out on July 14th, uh -huh. and at your August meeting that you would have a have a meeting before the meeting. Uh -huh. You mean at our August city council meeting? Mm -hmm. That's in the August 14th or whatever? August 18th. 18th? Okay. So rather than meet on the first. Yeah. I said rather than meet on the first, since we don't have any presentation. 
I mean, if we could, we could do that. I would just suggest, if I may, that like we did last time, we it's a little complicated. But can, we be, can we be in the city council and just adjourn? Um, that way, it's just we have to come in. Right, I don't see that. Yeah. I can check with Councilor Dwight. Yeah. Right. I, I don't see yeah. that there would be a problem. That would make sense. Plus, I like the idea of not meeting them first, so I'm going to have difficulty making them meet. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. So we'll plan on postponing the meeting of the first to happen on the 18th. Yeah. 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 The 18th of when? The day of our city council meeting. Yeah. During the city council meeting, we're going to like we've done before, we're going to uh, just adjourn and go into our subcommittee and then go back into the regular council. Sounds like it. Okay, I, I had yeah. listed the rest of those areas because I wasn't sure if you wanted the Forbes Library to still come considering oh, that they had just presented at the budget hearing. Mm -hmm. That's right. And also, um, I was looking for uh, topics that you wanted to have me forward to the building commissioner and to potentially Lily Library if you wanted them to come on in okay. October. So can people forward those questions directly to Pam if they have them? Sure. On either uh, around the Lily Library or um, the other couple of or the building commissioner for, for the upcoming meetings that we have, if you have some specific questions. Yeah. So, so did you want me to still have the Forbes Library come? Um, I don't know that we need to. We just, you, yeah. you said we did just hear, was everyone at that budget hearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did yeah. hear from them recently. We, we did some, maybe some, perhaps not. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think not. All right, so we have a few minutes, but we we adjourn now. We can take a moment for that. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Very good. Thank